Hello guys, it's been a while since my bike analysis video, but today I have here a great bike, the Rocky Mountain Slayer 2017. This bike uses a horse link system and it has four positions to adjust the geometry. Here, in this video, I will analyze for the position tree, but the other positions are also very identical to this one. So here you have uh, our bike model at the suck position. Since this bike is a horse link, it has the, the wheels and the brakes around the seat stay, okay? And as you know, the seat stay is connected to the main frame by this bar here, the rocker arm, and by the chain stay. And as you can see, the chain stay and the rocker arm are almost parallel, okay? So this means that uh, our instant center of the bike Okay, the intersection of those two lines is really far away uh, from the center of the bike. If you watched my previous video, the episode 10, you already know that this means that the bike has a very neutral braking. Okay, so if you draw the anti-rise line, you can see that the anti-rise is quite low, around 27%, which is a very low uh, value for an enduro bike. So this means that braking doesn't affect the suspension and we can see that in this animation okay so as you can see imagine that the caliper is right here okay the brake caliper is right here as you can see uh, the seat stay does not move almost anything around the disc uh, during the the suspension compression okay so well, if you compare it, for instance with the gt force you can see that the chain stay moves much more around the disc than in the case of the Slayer. This means that in the case of the GT Force, when you brake, you are pulling down the suspension. Okay, so you are compressing the suspension a bit and you are also slowing down the rebound of, of the suspension. Here, in the case of Slayer, if you brake, the suspension is not affected by the braking forces. Good, so let's move on to the a more important parameter, the anti-squat, okay, so the pedaling efficiency. To determine anti-squat, we need the instant center position that we already saw previously, and now we are going to cross a line connecting the rear wheel to the instant center. Like this, okay, so this is our swing arm line. Now we need to check where the swing arm line crosses the chain line, okay? So, and as you can see, the, chain, the swing arm line crosses the chain line just on top of our um, chain ring. So, if you saw my previous video, episode 11, about anti-squats, you already know that this is the perfect spot uh, for this crossing to happen. Why? First, if this happens, you got an anti-squat of 100%, meaning that the bike will pedal very good. And secondly, by crossing at that position, it means that independently of the rear cog that you use, the chain line will, will always cross the swing arm line at that position. Okay, so that means that the, the anti-squat value is the same for our rear cogs. So as you can see, the, um, the Slayer has a very good anti-squat, very good pedaling efficiency, and the anti-squats are really good optimized for all rear cogs. So the bike is, is quite well designed. Okay, here we can see the, how the anti-squat changes along the travel. Okay, so you got uh, quite high anti-squats at the beginning, then you got around 100% as we saw at the sack position, and the anti-squats then uh, decrease a bit or a, a lot at the end of the travel. By decreasing a lot at the end of the travel, it means that it, it will also reduce the amount of pedal kickback. Okay, so pedal kickback's values are under normal levels. Good, so let's move on to the last parameter, okay, the leverage ratio or the progressivity. Okay, so basically the leverage ratio is the ratio between the wheel travel and shock travel, okay? And this leverage ratio will dictate the feeling and the behavior of the suspension. Okay, so this is our leverage ratio. So as you can see, 
it's a progressive leverage ratio okay it starts at three almost three and then it ends up at almost 2.1 to determine the the value of the progressivity of the frame we just need to plot the force against the travel of the bike and then at the sack position 30 percent that 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 corresponds to this point here okay now you cross a line between the zero and that sack position and you get something like this okay so this green line corresponds exactly to a linear bike and this blue line is the rocky mountain slayer and what this graph shows you is that if you compare the slayer bike with a fully linear bike if you compare both bikes at the same sag 30 percent sag and with a similar shock settings that means that the the slayer will always need more 50 percent of force to bottom out now going to our famous progressivity table as you can see the rocky mountain slayer is at almost the bottom of the table okay so it's a really progressive bike and in my opinion the 50 percent progressivity is a really good value for an enduro bike to conclude the slayer 2017 has a great uh, pedaling efficiency with great anti-squat values for a single ring setup it also has a normal pedal kickback values the braking performance is really impressive the suspension is not affected by the braking forces so the suspension is very independent from the braking forces and finally the the frame has a very good amount of progressivity about 50 percent meaning that the bike will have a good sensitivity and also a good bottom-out resistance so overall the Rocky Mountain Slayer is a great bike and it has great kinematics for a normal and aggressive enduro bike so in my opinion it's a good candidate to enduro bike of the year so that's it guys so I hope you like this video and see you next time bye